Good morning, everybody. I'm Richard Parr, and you are watching Sportachino. We are live on Wednesday, the 7th of December, 2016. We're live on YouTube, live on Facebook, and live on Periscope. Please share it. Please like it. Please follow us on all of these different platforms and get involved in the conversation. We'd love to hear from you. What did you make of the Champions League last night? Big win for Arsenal. Manchester City held against Celtic. A big win for uh, Barcelona. They were 4-0 winners against München Gladbach. We would love to hear from you this morning. Give us your thoughts. We'll also look ahead to tonight's Champions League matches and we are going live to Russia. All that and much, much more on today's Sport of Chino. But let's begin the day with our morning sports headlines. Arsenal defeat Basel 4-1 to finish top of their Champions League group. PSG drew 2-2 against Luda Goretz. Napoli beat Benfica 2-1 to top Group B. But Besiktas's 6-0 defeat at Dinamo Kiev means Benfica also go through. The 12-time Grand Slam champion Novak Djokovic has parted ways with Boris Becker as his coach after three years. And in golf, Thomas Bjorn has been named the European Ryder Cup captain for 2018. Today's Sportachino is brought to you by Barclays Eagle Labs. Barclays Eagle Labs allows businesses to create, to innovate and to grow. If you want to learn more about them, just go to their website, labs.uk.barclays. You can also follow them on Twitter at eagle underscore labs. They've got co-working spaces and private offices. Check them out. Thanks to them for sponsoring today's show. If you would like to sponsor one of our future shows, it's really easy. Just drop us an email. It's sportsdesk at sportachino.com. We would love to hear from you. And keep the comments coming on Periscope and on Facebook and on YouTube. Let us know what did you make of Arsenal's performance last night. And we like to push the conversation a little bit further on our Twitter page. And we do that by doing a daily poll every single morning. Let's have a look at the poll today on Twitter. So we're asking about there's a story that cricket might be played at the London Olympic Stadium. It's the home of West Ham. It's going to host the 2017 World Athletics Championships. Of course, it was the home of the Olympics, of the 2012 London Games, the opening and closing ceremony, as well as the Paralympics as well. And there's talk about it being used for cricket. Is that the right thing for this stadium? Is that all part of the legacy? Should it be used at the 2019 Cricket World Cup? We would love to get your thoughts on that. People, let us know your thoughts on the Periscope page, on the Twitter page, on Facebook. We would really love to hear from you. So that poll is, would you like to see cricket plays at the London Olympic Stadium? Simple question, yes or no. All right, let's have a look at the result of yesterday's poll. We were talking about football. Hull losing to Middlesbrough on Monday night, 1-0. Gaston Ramirez was the only goal on Monday. And we want to know, do you think Hull will be relegated this season? And a lot of you think it's going to happen. 86% of you think, goodbye Hull, farewell, au revoir, you're going to go down. 86% of you think Hull are going to be relegated this season season. All right, so that is the bottom of the English Premier League, but let's talk about the creme de la creme, the best of the best in the European, the UEFA Champions League. Let's have a look at what happened on Tuesday. So there is, as we mentioned in the headlines, in Group A, Arsenal beat Basel 4-1. Perez with the goals there. Paris Saint-Germain, they were held 2-2 against Luda Goretz. And what that meant is that Arsenal will be going through in that group as group winners. The first time they've done that since the 2011-2012 season. So that's five years. And it's the first time they've gone through a whole group unbeaten. Uh, since 2005, 2006, that's when, of course, they got to the final but lost to Barcelona. Remember that Sol Campbell, the disallowed goal? A bit like he had for England as well, but yeah, remember that. That, that feels like yesterday, but it's, it's nearly 10 years ago, people. Wow. So, Group B, 
Look at this, Napoli and Benfica, they were in the prime positions to go through in that group. And Napoli, they won 2-1 away in Portugal at the Estadio de Luz, or the Stadium of Light. Don't get confused, Sunderland fans, it's a different stadium. And Napoli won, so they won the group, but Benfica, because Dinamo Kiev thrashed Besiktas 6-0, it means Benfica go through also in that group. So even though they lost, they were celebrating at the end. Group C, Barcelona, Arda Turan getting a hat-trick against Borussia Mönchengladbach. 4-0, more pressure on the coach of Mönchengladbach there. Manchester City held to a 1-1 draw against Celtic. Uh, talks that there could be an investigation into some of the fans' behaviour at the Etihad Stadium. In Group D, Bayern Munich, they beat Atletico Madrid 1-0. Both teams had already qualified from that group. And PSV drew 0-0 with Rostov. And Rostov are, of course, from Russia. And we've been so lucky on this show to have guests from Qatar, from Singapore, from India, from the Czech Republic, from all over the world. And today we are going live to Russia. I am delighted to bring onto the show the Russia-based sports specialist, Alan Moore. He's joining us live from the east of Europe, Alan, it's great to have you on the show. How are you doing this morning? Very good now that I'm inside, Richard, and thank you for having me on the show. It's uh, finally I'm on Sportish Uno, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, you know, we, we, we had to wait a while to wait for the perfect time, and we thought it was going to be with Tottenham versus Siska. We thought it could be a really huge occasion at Wembley Stadium, and now we know it's a, it's a battle for the Europa League. Um, in England, while there is still a place for the Champions League up for grabs at stake in that third spot, if you go into the Europa League, do people in Russia care? Because they don't really care too much here. Well, you know, it's, the way we, the most clubs here would look at it, Richard, would be that uh, it's, it's um, extra revenue. And it's also a bit of pride as well, because Zenit topped their group, as we saw against them. Like, they were very, very good, even in a tough group with the um, Krasnodar are, are also through uh, in the Europa League and Rostov last night qualified uh, with their nil-nil draw uh, in Holland to win the Europa League as well. So if Siska don't do it, 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 it'll be a loss of face um, and I think as well for bragging rights they need to go through and you know I, I understand in England because you know the Champions League and Premier League are, are a lot more important even than the FA Cup uh, sadly in, in my point of view however uh, the Europa League here in Russia, yeah, it's, it's pretty important because uh, it's a it's a good source of revenue. And so this could potentially be one of the last matches, if not the last match for the Siska coach, Leonard Slutsky. Are these reports correct? Yeah, it seems to be. Uh, there, a week and a bit ago, uh, it was announced in media here um, that he had booked a restaurant, uh, a, a full restaurant in London for himself and the players right after the match. Um, of course, then people dug a little bit and, and uh, it, it was covered that most likely he was going to stand down. Um, you know, Sis Garrett having a great season, there are some issues in the club, and he, he's unsettled since he came back from um, the European Championships uh, in France. Um, so, yesterday he was asked by uh, a former colleague of mine that, will you, um, uh, you know, if, if you win tonight or you qualify for the Europa League tonight, um, Will you stay on? He said categorically no. So he, he will step down. What could be next for him, Alan? Great question, Richard. Uh, it's something that last week I was discussing with some you know, real honest to God football insiders here. Uh, it could be he'll go to Krasnodar uh, because he you know he's he's from the south, so it'll be a good kind of fit for him in a way with a difficult club owner. Um, or uh, as I thought last year well, that he'll look for Europe and this is kind of the rumour and the great part that he's he's going to look uh, at England to, to go to England. Mm, that could be interesting, really test his wits out in one of the uh, most competitive leagues in the world. It would be interesting to see if he wants to move to England. What's his English like by the way Alan? It's better. He has taken English classes so he has improved his English. It's not perfect. Uh, however, as we know, you know the language of football will get across, and pretty quickly he'll he, he'll he'll make it work. Uh, last year, when there was a vacancy in Chelsea, uh, he was touted for that, 
Um, he would have been a decent fit because he is kind of uh, Abramovich's man. Um, however, I, I, I think he'll survive uh, if he went to England with his English. Uh, but, I, you know, I think he might be ripped apart by the media. That's the only issue. Well, let's move on. Let's talk a little bit more about the, the Russian Premier League, in fact. And it's Spartak Moscow leading it right now. Bit of a revival story there. What have been the main changes to, to make this revival happen, Alan? Um, <clears throat> I think it's it's bringing in a bit of a Italian um, negativity and cynicism, in a way, uh, combined with some very good players and um, a kind of a lot of inconsistent opponents. Um, the Carrera, who's the head coach now, had worked under Conte previously, and he's a decent coach, was an assistant. Um, when the former coach of NHL was removed, he stepped up. Uh, it was meant to be temporary, but he stayed in position. Um, he's made them harder to beat, and he's made them tougher. Uh, in addition, they have some very, very good players, a very good goalkeeper in Red Rov, um, and, a, and an excellent uh, Dutch um, I say winger or attacking midfielder or like kind of striker, uh, Quincy Promise, uh, who really knows where the goal is. So um, just with some good players uh, and some pretty solid tactics and a lot of our teams being consistent, they have managed to stay top of the league. Uh, they're five points clear now going into the winter break. Um, however, uh, it looks like they're going to lose Promise. Um, it, it, it seems like a number of teams in England are, are hunting him down. So that would be a huge loss for the side. I'm imagining the headlines already in England if he comes. Um, I, I, I see him at Watford, then he can play up front with success. Then you've got promise and success up front together. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Uh, Periscope viewers, Facebook viewers, if you've got any questions for Alan, put them on the description page. We're talking all things to do with Russian sports with the Russia-based sports specialist Alan Moore this morning. Now, when you think of Russia right now, there's all this talk about these doping allegations. There was the Wada report back in July with Richard McLaren, where there was, uh, it was alleged that there was state-sponsored doping going across all of Russia. You've been very close to these stories in, uh, well, throughout the last few years, in fact, not just since July. Um, there's going to be a second report out this Friday. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. But first, why don't you just re remind our viewers of exactly what was found back in that report in July? Yeah, I, uh, Richard, it's, it's, it's a tough one um, because the report uh, by WADA looked mainly, uh, I'd say solely, at uh, the Sochi Winter Olympics 2014 and relied heavily on the... Um, uh, testimony and information from the former head of the um, testing lab here in, in, in well in Russia, uh, Rodchenko, who uh, was along with his sister and people were actually providing drugs and selling drugs and and so on and so forth. So he he was the insider's insider, and in one way he would be the ultimate whistleblower, or you know kind of like who had turned state's evidence, shall we say? Uh, a lot of accusations were made in the report about Sachi about how they had. Um, drilled a hole in the wall of the lab in Sochi and they were passing urine samples through the hole in the wall and so on. Uh, that they had um, the Russian Secret Service, which is called the FSB, um, had managed to um, tamper with tamper proof bottles. Uh, now, the, this is what was presented as evidence of uh, you know, doping or, or, or state sponsored doping in Russia. Uh, so it was. A lot of kind of circumstantial evidence, which you know certainly by by all levels would not stand up in a court of law. I mean, uh, it you know it was kind of like, well, you did it. We don't know how you did it, but you did it. And uh, it was you know widely ridiculed by a lot of people who understood sports law, and also it was very difficult to deal with here in Russia. However, it was kind of the culmination of around um, I, I, the best part of a year. Of this non-stop kind of, um, you know, I, I would use the word rhetoric about it uh, towards Russia and doping in Russia, and um, the use of the word state-sponsored, which straight off the bat is correct, because doping in Russia for athletes uh, who, who do dope or who have doped, um, of course, will be state-sponsored because the government uh, is the main sponsor of everything in Russia, from. Uh, 
you know, from all the football clubs to boxing clubs and so on. So they all draw down on state funds. So why is it correct to say it was state sponsored? Um, you know, it, it kind of um, it intimated that this was run from the very, very top. Uh, whereas it seemed more like a kind of a, a very slick business enterprise run by people on the ground. Um, and this is what McLaren kind of brought out that he, what he said, you know, kind of he was trying to bring as much group as possible using this man, uh, Rochenkov, uh, who's now in America, uh, and also based on other whistleblowers like Stepanovs and so on, who were brought forward by um, our German colleague, Pio Sapelt. So, you know, it, it led to an absolute mess and uh, a lot of embarrassment and also a lot of anger. And of course, to the, um, the Russian Paralympic uh, team being banned from the Paralympics, and from an awful lot of Russian athletes being banned from the Olympics as well. Mm, yeah, such a complex story, Alan. And as we mentioned earlier, there's going to be potentially more revelations to come on Friday when the second part of this report comes out. It's going to be released in London. Are they fearing the worst in Russia? And, and what are we really expecting to happen on Friday? Um, yesterday, our new... Uh, Vice Prime Minister, Deputy Prime Minister, who was the Minister for Sport and still is the, the president of the Russian Football uh, Union, uh, Vitaly Mutko, said this is like the, the, it's going to be another attack on Russia. Uh, in a way, he's correct. Uh, however, it shouldn't really have gotten this far. It should have been um, dealt with a lot quicker. Uh, yesterday, um, there was a, a there was a documentary aired on doping in the West. West, as in anywhere outside of Russia, that could include anywhere from Croatia to Canada to Greenland. Um, it it didn't do the job because it was nothing that you or I or everybody else would know that, yes, doping is prevalent everywhere. You go into a, a, a small gym in uh, Islington or in Dublin or in Moscow and there's guys who want to get bigger, stronger and to do whatever they, they have to. That's just, you know, from working in the sports nutrition industry, I've seen that. So, um, you know, they, they, they didn't make any decent case. So I think most people here are almost, that I've spoken with, are just resigned and they're just going, not again, not again. Like, I mean, when is it going to end and when can we just have fair play and be given a clear, open roadmap uh, of how we can get from here to there and basically get back on track. Yeah, so it's all very interesting. We'll have to wait and see what happens there on Friday. Of course, follow Alan on Twitter to get more information when that happens on Friday. A great source of that information. Alan, unfortunately, we've run out of time today. I mentioned your Twitter account there. Why don't you tell us how we can continue to follow your great knowledge and everything you're up to in Russia and anything else you'd like to mention before you go? Well, yeah, just, I mean, I get, uh, one of the things that we are looking forward with that the, uh, the All-Russian Football Players Union, so to give them a little bit of a, a look at on Twitter because they're doing a great job. Um, and of course, uh, and I'll, I'll give you a shout out and I guess you can put it up as well. Um, also, the, um, uh, it's uh, at uh, X-E-L-A, um, X, excuse me, X-E-L-A-V-O- V O T O Z. So if you have a look at that, that's uh, you know everything they're doing for to improve the rights and conditions of football, professional footballers and footballers in general in Russia, um, led by Alexander Zotov, the CEO, and the legendary uh, Roman Shorokov as president, and for the good old Moscow Shamrocks here in Moscow, who are keeping uh, and promoting uh, Gaelic football here as part of the overall uh, Gaelic Games Europe Association. So. Um, we're a small, hardy band, but growing weekly. Mm -hmm. Being a, a former expat myself, it's so important to have those small communities, and so you get a little feel of home, even when you're thousands of miles away. Alan, it's been really great to get your knowledge this morning. Thank you so much for joining us live from Russia, the Russia-based sports specialist, Alan Moore. Thanks a lot, Alan. Thank you, Richard. Great to hear from Alan there on this morning's Sports Chino. A lot of really important information and we will also talk a bit more about that McLaren report on Monday's Sportachino when we hear more about it when we hear more about it on Friday.
All right, let's move on. If you would like to support our show, it's really, really easy. You know, at the moment, we, we do it for you for free every single weekday morning, bringing you top great information, sports news results, all like that every single weekday morning. If you'd like to support us, it's really easy. Go and buy some of our merchandise. Look, you can be like me. You can be like one of the cool kids with a Sportachino mug. Look at this bad boy. You can get it from sportachino.com, really easy from the merchandise page. We've got a whole range of items, so why don't you take a look at what we have on offer. Just to let you know, I think you've got until December the 16th if you want to buy your Sportachino merchandise to get it in time for Christmas. You know, give your loved one something special, maybe a Sportachino hoodie, maybe a Sportachino mug, you know, send them something special. What do you think, Periscope? What do you think, Facebook? Do you like this mug? Would you like to give this as a gift? Get involved in the conversation. We would love to hear from you this morning. All right, let's sort out all of this football. Let's have a quick look ahead at what is happening on tonight's Champions League matches. Just a quick little run through as I know some of you are so excited to see today's product review. Group E, Leverkusen versus Monaco. Both of those teams are already through, while Tottenham versus Siska, as we mentioned with Allen, is a battle for the Europa League. At Wembley, Group F, Legia Warsaw versus Sporting, but it's Real Madrid versus Dortmund, and both of those teams are already through. In Group G, Club Bruges face Copenhagen and Porto face Leicester. Both Porto and Copenhagen have a chance of going through from that group. Leicester have already won that group. Porto are on eight points, Copenhagen are on six points. So a win should be enough for Porto. But if Copenhagen fail to win, they go out. They probably go to the Europa League. Group H, it's Juventus versus Dinamo Zagreb. Juve are already through. So it's between Lyon and Sevilla and Leon needs to win by two goals or more to reach the knockout stage. So that is Wednesday's matches in the Champions League. We'll be dissecting all of that on tomorrow's show from 8 a.m. GMT. All right, guess what? It's that time. It's time for our sports, health and fitness product review. Today I'm the Cookie Monster. Larry, sorry, I need to say it right. Lenny and Larry's The Complete Cookie. 16 grams of protein, all for the gums, going straight into there. What else? It's a, I don't know what a snickerdoodle flavor is. Anyone know what a snickerdoodle flavor is? What's a snickerdoodle flavor? Cinnamon and brown sugar, apparently. Maybe Hannah should be doing this review because I don't know what snickerdoodle is. Baked nutrition. Let's have a look at some of the nutritional information. So, total carbs, 27 grams. That is a lot of carbs, actually. It's got 16 grams of protein, but that seems a lot to me. Uh, calories is 180 calories. That's not bad. Uh, 190 milligrams of sodium. Total fat is 6%. Some facts about it, they're fresh baked, vegan, no dairy, no eggs, no soy, kosher, oh, that's good, uh, no high fructose corn syrup, eight grams of fiber, no cholesterol, no trans fat, no artificial sweeteners, no sugar, alcohols, sustainable palm oil. Is it gluten-free? Hmm. Doesn't 
say it's gluten free, which is interesting. It's interesting it's, it's vegan. Uh, all right, but it's, so it's got a lot of stuff about it. There's a lot of things which aren't in it, but here is the crucial question. It might be healthy. It might be good for you protein wise. It might be good as a post-workout or pre-workout snack, but is it tasty? There's only one way to find out. Well, oh, I sound like Harry Hill then. What? No. Eat. All right, let's have a look at it. Pretty big. It looks pretty plain. Oh, it does smell cinnamony. I could have probably guessed that actually. Periscope, Facebook viewers, let us know if you've ever tried it. What does it taste like? Let us know. Give us your thoughts. Are there any other protein cookies which you've tried? We've tried a couple before. I can't remember which ones I liked or didn't like. They're all on the YouTube channel. We've got a whole playlist there of product reviews with some former protein cookies involved. Have a look at all of them on the YouTube page. All right, here it is. I'll break a little, oh, I'm making a mess. Oh no. Anyway, here's a little bit. Let's try it. very soft. It, no, it's very soft to eat. It's not very soft to break. You know you get those American cookies which are a really good smell, like so delicious, like Millie's cookie. You go into a morning smell, oh, yeah, I want a cookie. This, is, this isn't that same smell. It's got a cinnamon smell. I'd love to dunk it in a, a tea or a hot coffee. Unfortunately, my coffee's got cold, but I imagine dunking it in there, Sportachino mug. Mm. I could eat this. I could eat this on a regular basis, I think. 16 grams of protein. So tomorrow if I come on the show and my guns are even bigger, you know it's because of the protein cookie. Um, cinnamon, I, I like cinnamon in my morning porridge. Yeah, I'd have this again. I, I, I don't mind this. I don't think it's a, the greatest cookie. I don't think it's a, the softest and squidgiest. But it's tasty enough. So why don't you have a look at it. I've got an Amazon link on the Facebook page, on the YouTube page. Of course, if you buy it via Amazon, I do get a little bit of a kickback. I do get a little bit of money there. I'm not associated with um, Lenny and Larry at all. This is my impartial review. But let me know what you think. Maybe try and buy it. You help support our show. Plus, you get a nice tasting cookie. Let us know. So that is the Lenny and Larry's The Complete Cookie Product Review. All right, we've run out of time on today's show, but let's have a quick reminder of today's sports headlines. Arsenal defeat Basel 4-1 to finish top of their Champions League group. PSG drew 2-2 against Luda Goretz. Napoli beat Benfica 2-1 to top Group B. But Besiktas's 6-0 defeat at Dinamo Kiev means Benfica also goes through. The 12-time Grand Slam champion Novak Djokovic has parted ways with Boris Becker as his coach after three years. And in goal, Thomas Bjorn has been named the European Ryder Cup captain of 2018. All right, that's it for another Sportachino. Wow, time flies when you're having fun. If you've been watching on the Periscope channel, thanks for watching. <laughs> there goes the cookie. <coughs> like clockwork. Every single time I eat a cookie or a protein bar, <coughs> we wait to close the show and it hits the back of my throat. We need to do another product review. Let, let's bring back that horrible energy drink we had from Monday. That's what I probably need. Anyway, we've come towards the end of today's Sportachino. Thanks for joining us on Facebook. Please share this broadcast. Please follow us on Periscope. Please like us on Facebook. Please follow us on Twitter. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. I know it sounds something so trivial, but it really, really does matter to us. So if you just get that five seconds, that 10 seconds to do it, that would be wonderful. Still, it's still coming, it's still choking me. <coughs> Please get involved. We would love to hear from you every single, I'm gonna have some of this coffee. Goodness me, I'm dying here. Anyway, it's lucky it's the end of the show, isn't it? It's lucky I'll do this product review at the end. Anyway, on tomorrow's Sportachino, we're going live to New Zealand. We are speaking to the New Zealand football head coach, Anthony Hudson. He's gonna be live from New Zealand on Sportachino. If you've got any questions for him, let us know on the Twitter page. We'll also have updates from the England versus India fourth test match. We didn't get a moment to talk about that on today's show. 
but can England get their way back into this test series? Can they win this next test? We'll bring you all the updates from that. We'll review last night's Champions League matches from Wednesday. We'll also look ahead to the Europa League. It's another packed show. You don't want to miss it. We're on Periscope. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. We're live. And also listen back to it on iTunes. All right, there's the selling. There's the show. I've been Richard Parr. You've been watching Sportachino. We're back tomorrow morning from 8 o'clock.